Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acree. And our guest today is a superstar. Yeah, actually a real like influencer. <laughs> <laughs> and a real celebrity. <laughs> her name is Kirsten Jordan. We're going to bring her on in just a second. Luke, if Luke ever gets control of himself here. <laughs> I can't. I just, <laughs> okay. Yes. She's amazing, though. She is. And please do not judge her episode based upon our based intro, intro. Because Josh and I are just... You know, being our true selves, right? Our true this, authentic selves. We talk about yeah, that. We actually in talk this about episode. this in the no, This is an absolutely fantastic episode. Just talking about uh, Kirsten and her journey on yep. a million dollar listing, and you know, raising three kids. Well, I love about this is, and she said it, it's like, how does she? She said people are so interested in like, how do I do it all? Because yeah. she is like super successful on TV, celebrity type influencer, mom. So all these things. How do you balance it all? If you want to know how someone balances, take a listen. Absolutely. Before we bring her on. We would love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed and while you're there, drop us a review to let us know how we're doing. We'll read it on the show. This week's review comes from Buck's Agent One via Apple Podcasts. So Buck's Agent, she actually follows on Instagram. She uh, tags us on a lot of stuff. Love seeing her stuff. She says, wonderful tips, five stars. I am absolutely in love with the Stay Paid podcast and Josh and Luke. They ask the most insightful questions. The conversations are interesting and flow so easily. They're super genuine, funny, and down to earth. Genuine? We talk about being genuine. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. I'm blushing. Passionate about what they do. You can feel it. The Reminder Media Magazine is fantastic too. The nuggets and actionable advice are definitely golden. This is the best and most useful podcast out there for sales, marketing, recreating business, motivation, social media marketing. We got the cheering section in the back (laughs) and building better relationships. Time to add the podcast to your repertoire. And give Luke and Josh a serious listen. Could I give more than five stars? Thank wow. you so much, Aww. Bucks Agent One, Thank for you. leaving that review. And now let's get into this week's interview. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Our guest today is Kirsten Jordan. As a real estate broker, public speaker, and the first female cast member of Bravo's Million Dollar Listing New York, Kirsten has brokered an astounding half a billion dollars in sales. During her decade in real estate, she's worked with Fortune 500 executives, Oscar-winning actors, and mega influencers with millions of followers. Kirsten, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. It's awesome to have you on the show. I have to admit, though, I was super nervous with your name because <laughs> my executive assistant, Anne Marie, was like, no, the, how you watch pronounce her video. name. Yeah, watch this video because it's different. And I was like, oh, man. And then I saw you had a video with how you pronounce your name and why your team called you like KJ. So it's Kirsten. Yeah. That's how you pronounce it, not it's Kirsten. Kir- it, okay. it, it is Kirsten. Yeah, Kirsten. It is Kirsten. But yeah, everybody calls me KJ, or at least a lot of people do. And when people see me on the street, most of the time, they're like, hey, are you KJ? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm um, KJ. I don't well, know how that happened, but um, that's KJ. the power of branding. We're going right to get there. into that. Yeah, yeah, the power of branding. But I want to ask you, how did you get on Million Dollar Listing New York? Right, hugely popular show. Right, you know, first female to be on the show. How did that come to be? So, um, what's crazy about it is that you know everybody has their own convoluted way that they ended up on the show. I mean, there is a you know Ryan writes in his book very openly about his casting process. You know, it was like a big room of people and all that. Mine was different because the fact that we're like in a virtual world now. You know, it was much more virtually oriented. Um, you know, somebody reached out to me and and just said, "Hey, would you be interested in being on this show?" And the process took several months of various levels of um being vetted i guess you could say that and and you know i can tell you that i think one of the things that helped me being able to get on the show in the first place was that i had been focusing on my instagram and my personal brand through my instagram since Mm. 2017 and i think that that helped put me on their radar is would be my guess you know again that you never really know why why you're like the one because the truth is is that you know you find out of eventually you find out the people that you were up against you know and that's this i mean i I started filming in the beginning of 2020 and so now we're in you know the last half of 2021 and now i'm finding out like who was by like 
who was the person who was, who was the other person who they were choosing between me and them. And like all the stories of the people who came before me, who didn't get picked, who were so close. And, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big deal here, just the same way it would be a big deal anywhere else. And so, you know, I, I, for me, my relationships in the industry, the, the length of time I've been doing this for, and then all the rest of this fabulous package is the reason why I think that I was picked, <laughs> but I, I, that's all I can, that's all I can surmise from the whole thing. That, that's what I would tell everybody that I'd just be like, it's my personality. Yeah. I mean, just look at me. Look it's, at my, me. <laughs> it's my personality. It's all, it's all personality. Do they let you be your authentic self? on there, right? Because that's a huge thing oh, with yeah. branding. Do you yeah. find yourself being constrained or can you just, you're just doing you? Honestly, I think that it always is better when I am able to be more authentic. It's when you freeze or when you're kind of like, you know, trying to do too many things at the same time and you're trying to not be authentic or you feel like you're trying to get a message across that I think it gets a little bit more wonky. You know, the the objective really is to be is to be yourself. And I found the more I've leaned into being myself and being more playful and being more fun and being uh, being able to use the years of knowledge and all of the experience I have to transmit something that is just really like my full on personality and how confident I am in this industry has has been the best of me. You know, it's when I try to like do anything else that I just feel like I, I look at those scenes and I'm like, oh, you're so awkward. <laughs> We experienced the same thing on this podcast. <laughs> so how has that impacted your business, Kirsten? Has it, and how, like from a client perspective, from getting team members, like how has that really kind of impacted your brand overall? Um, I mean, I think everybody thinks, and I had even really trusted advisors who were like, just get to the, just get to the premiere and your phone is going to ring off the hook. You're just going to have people banging down your door who want to be, who want to work with you and want to be your broker and want to be, on your team. They want you to be their broker. They want to be on your team. They want you to sell their $50 million home. And it's like, I, I, I hate to like break it to everybody, but that's not exactly how it works. Like it's, wow. it's amazing. Yep. It opens doors. It opens doors for relationships. It opens doors from the perspective that if you use it to leverage, you, there's so much more business that will come from it. Um, but then there's a distraction level of all of this. It's very, very important. And it's if you're really going to do the business and be actively doing and doing deals, you have to compartmentalize the part of it that are, for lack of a better word, all of the PR pieces, like mm-hmm. the podcasts. Yeah. Right. And the, you know, there's only so much business you can be doing if you're if you spend your whole day just doing that. Because mm-hmm. still, you know, if you're going on the show to get new business and get business, people still want to see you at some point and talk to you. So the key is I've found has been using it as leverage, using it to get into the door the best that I can. And knowing as all of the other cast members have told me that, you know, it's usually two years in that your business really starts to really starts to move okay. two, three years in. Everybody says their third season is when they really, really see the biggest push. Mm. Right now, I think I, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of inbounds that we've gotten that are positive and they're great. You know, you have to sift through some stuff that isn't really, really that, you know, relevant mm. or maybe it isn't totally real because there's like people out there who are creepy. Um, but 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 it's all super positive. And then I, and then I do have my own business already. Yeah. You know, it's my first... I, I started my team in February. I mean, like, I made a lot of... It's hard to... It's not a scientific experiment. Let's just say that. There's no control here. Like, I, you don't know where... I don't know where any of it's coming from sometimes. You know, you want to track where the leads are coming from. And sometimes right. you have no idea. You can only assume that it could be coming from that presence on the show because they don't say where they're coming from. And so you're like, I guess it must be from the show or, you know, or you get a phone call and then it could just be from all the newspaper articles. You know, I, I, I speak to reporters every day about the market. I, I, it's, as you can imagine, it becomes a collective consciousness and it's not a direct correlation of one thing that's the cause for the effect. No, I think that's a really powerful point for the audience <clears throat> is really this idea of when you build a brand so often, I think why businesses fail is they only try to do marketing that is like direct response marketing and they undervalue the things that are building your brand because it's not instant gratification. And what you said right there, which I thought is super interesting, even with the show, the people on the show tell you it's about three seasons in. And my brain goes to, I think that's because it takes relationships. Like it takes three seasons to develop. First, you develop the relationship. Then you nurture it, get to know them. Then you, you know, kind of follow the opportunities as they lead. And then three years in, 
you've kind of made it to where there's a referral happening. When you look at like your past, because you're not a new agent. I mean, you've been at this for what, 13 years in the business? So 13 years in the business, when you look at your business, do you find that most of your business comes from referrals? Is that the strategy you work? Do you work a myriad of different marketing strategies? What has kind of driven the business for you? So what I've what I've realized, and I think this is something that a lot of the coaches will tell you is that I don't focus on just one source of leads at all. And the more I've warmed up to cold leads, which is I did the first 12 years of the business, I never used cold leads. I I picked up people at open houses every once in a while, but it was always people that I knew. It was never people I didn't know. And maybe I'd get one inbound from somebody who was like, oh, you sold in the building I'm talking about, you know, about, about, you know, my apartment. So I would say it's only now that I've started working with cold leads and people that I don't know. And, and I, and I love those services. I think all that's super cool. I, I think it's great. I think it's good momentum. I think if you're paying out, I, I'm, I love paying referral fees. I love incentivizing any sort of way of bringing in business because I yep. think that it all builds momentum. And I also believe that new agents need to spend time on some of these leads that help you get out there and seek the market. Because, you know, like I had a cold lead come in the other day, you know, that was, I think it was probably some sort of some lead one of these lead gen things, because we all use them. And, you know, the reason I was able to convert them within 30 seconds was because I'd already seen all that inventory with another buyer who still doesn't know what the heck they're going to do. But I, you know, I'd already seen everything. And so I was able to quickly flip the, flip the switch. They're probably buying a $6 million apartment. And, you know, it was because of the other stuff I'd done in the past. So my whole thing on the lead generation is exactly like you're saying, it takes years to create relationships. But if you're really, really well versed in what you do, there are people who love working with people, working with people that they don't know, mm. especially in a transaction like this. And it's figuring out how to like also have some some of that. Or maybe there's going to be social proof. Like I picked, I had a somebody call in on a listing that I have, and I started taking them to see other things. And then we realized that we have a very, very strong connection. That's a that's a connection through a friend of mine where they work at the same firm. The husbands work at the same firm and work really close together. Went to college together. So it's like. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't have called. Apparently, they weren't going to call me because nobody was going to... Like, my friends weren't going to tell them, hey, you need to call Kirsten. We know you're working to look for an apartment right now or you're looking for an apartment. But then I met them and then I was able to then use the network to make it work, my 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 knowledge of the market, and then all of that to make them be, become my buyer client. Um, so lead gener- I think lead generation is like... It's like a... It's not a like you're saying, it's not a direct thing where it's like, oh, this one thing I do that lead generation works. It's like, yeah, no. this is the magic lead generation. Formula. Right. There's yeah, tons. lead generation is is everything from inbounds to paying for leads to paying referral fees to people who will give you leads who you know are attorneys or whatever. And then it's knowing everything so well that once you get these leads into your grasp, that they have there's they have no chance. They're like stuck with you because they're just <laughs> they're not gonna. They, they're just like, I, of course, I would work with you. There's yeah, no they see you everywhere. Work. You said something interesting there that I think, you know, when you're a new agent being willing to almost sacrifice what you're going to get, it's not necessarily about the money you're going to get as much as getting the, like your brand out there. Like that's your yeah. advice to new agents is being willing to, because in the end it pays you dividends because you're learning the market. Yes, it's not exactly what you want to do, but you got to get out there in every single way. So you would encourage new agents, hey, just do the deals, like work the market, whatever opportunity. Yeah. Don't focus on necessarily, you know, the right deal at the, when you first get into the business. Oh, I mean, I think when you are first getting into the business, what you need to do is you need to learn, you need to spend a lot of time like, on as many balls in the air as humanly possible so that then when you know the when there's an opportunity when that when it's possible for you to be able to you know get something closed you start to understand also what it looks like when you're funnel because you know the idea here is like you know you're going to start off with this much and then it's going to dwindle down to this much and then it's going to dwindle this much and then the next thing you know it's like you end up with your two leads that are really selling mm. but it's that that process and in New York, market knowledge is everything. And I think that's probably the same way across the country. But market knowledge is everything. And the only way to truly get market knowledge is to actually be there. Because that's the value that we provide as real estate agents. Mm. Like the the algorithms, the only way that we're going to beat those algorithms is if we are personally and physically experiencing real estate and being able to provide our clients with 
real anecdotal knowledge that gets them more money than they would get if Zillow priced out the home for them. Right. Period. Yeah, the greatest analogy I heard was the Sherpa analogy. I forget who said it, but they basically said, look, you can get GPS tools to get you up Mount Everest, right? There's tons of different mechanical tools, technology-based tools to do it, but you still want that guide that has physically been up Mount Everest and that has experienced it in a multitude of different facets with a multitude of different people because that's truly what you are. Is going, yeah, there's tons of tools that can help you do it, but I've actually physically done it and I've done it in a myriad of different ways. Let's switch gears a little bit here. Uh, you're the obviously the first female on Million Dollar List in New York, which is insanely impressive. Right. You're also a mom, right? And so mm-hmm. my wife, Megan, and I, we just had our first kid and I'm watching oh. Megan, all the work she's doing just for one kid. This sounds terrible. I'm throwing myself no. under the bus. Me, you know, I try to do some work, but Megan, you know, she's the superstar. I'm wondering, how do you balance three kids, right? You have three, right? Three kids and doing what you're doing with Million Dollar Listing and success. Like, how do you balance all that and and try to make it successful in your life? Well, I mean, listen, we're still in a world where being the first woman at something is more is more exciting than being the first man at something because it's like the first person... It, nobody talks about that. So I think what's so funny about this is every single person asks me what it's like to be the first woman on the show. And I'm always like, I don't know, because it was not a big deal when there was a, a first bunch of guys on the show. But now that there's a first woman, it's like there's going to be something different. And the truth this is, it is super different, I'm sure, because I watch what they have to do and I watch what I have to do. And exactly like you're saying, I'm a mom of three. It's bonkers. Um, I'm super fortunate because I have a husband who's incredibly supportive and who is flexible in his job in the sense that he works you know, as much as I do, uh, if not more. And, you know, he makes time as well so that I can have the support. I also have, am really, really intensely organized in the sense Mm. that like there is no escaping being ultra organized and outsourcing and outsourcing at levels that our parents would laugh in our faces. Like, I think that, I think you have to dis you have to distance yourself when you're a working mom in today's world and trying to build a brand like I am where I am. Not only do I have to be like a hardworking and like show up and be good at what I do, but I also have to be super physically presentable and super present and super, you know, all, all of this, which I think is another thing that, you know, a lot of people say, Hey, I'm, I'm doing everything. So I'm going to let the, I'm going to let my appearance kind of go by the wayside, or I'm going to kind of just like wear sweats and everything like that's not an option for me. And so there's also that other element that I have to keep organized. And the way that I really do all of it is that I have like a, I, I, what was I talking? I was talking about it yesterday. It's like a, my secret formula, which is that I have to be in really, really good physical shape. Mm. I have to be really, really eat really, really clean. I have to be really careful how much I ingest of any sort of toxins, anything from caffeine to alcohol to any, even sugar. I'm really, really clear on the fact that there is no escaping the fact that like, I'm like, I'm like an Olympic athlete in the Mm. sense that there is, I I don't like, if I eat a Twinkie, it's like, I'm out for a couple of days. So it's like, that's, and it's not like I have some sort of medical condition, but it's like that kind of thing. So I, I, I really, really make sure that I'm in top physical shape because I think that it helps my mental state. And then I also really make sure that my, you know, that I have really, really good people working with my kids. You know, I mean, everything's very organized. And I do also focus on the quality time that I have with my kids daily is super quality. Mm. And I make sure that it's because I don't see them as much as other people see their kids. There's no, I can't pretend that I'm super present or that I'm at play dates or like all of that. That being said, I'm really, really clear about when I'm home. I get home from my day, I put my phone upside down and I literally go be with my kids. I put them to bed at night. I, we do this thing only called a snuggle where like I literally get into bed with each of them and spend like five or 10 minutes with each of them and like talk about their day, hear what they're doing and That's like awesome. just try to like reconnect and unwind. Um, and, and still it's still not as much as it should be. And there's, I'm always tweaking it and it's always something that you're tweaking. It's like running a business. You're never at a point where you say, Oh, this system we have, it's going to work for six months. It's never going to happen. It's always yeah. like, oh, I'm so glad I like my nanny today and the schedule today. I literally was leaving the house today and my husband looked at me and he goes, I see that you decided to have our oldest stop doing swimming this quarter. Are you sure that's the right idea? And I was like, um, ooh, you're kidding me, right? Like <laughs> she's where we switched her to tennis and it was a whole thing that I thought about a lot. 
with somebody <laughs> else who also organized it for me, by the way, because I wasn't actually organizing it myself. And you can connect with my personal assistant about that and talk to her about it. <laughs> That's great. And I'm out. And I'm out. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, how do you like from so you're balancing all this, right? You have your brand. You're now in Million Dollar List in New York and you're next to some mega brands, especially in the space of real estate, right? You got Ryan Serhant, you got Eklund and the team there. Like how how do you go in from a mindset perspective brand-wise to define your own brand? Like how, how does that process look for you of going what's right. your brand going to be? Well, I mean, for me, what's so ironic about all of this is like, I think a lot about brand, but I just spend more time just thinking about being really authentically myself and just being in a good state so that whatever I do is authentically me. Because my brand authentically is just what you see is what you get, which is that, I you know, that. I'm a straight shooter. I'm, I'm super ethical. I'm super honest. Um, you know, I'm still... I still know more about being a broker than I do about running a team or running some sort of entrepreneurial venture or running a business. Like I'm way better at just brokering. That's what I know how to do. And I have a really good grip on the market and a really good grip on, you know, how to sell homes and how to find deals. Right. And so that's what I focus on. And then, you know, I have this whole other element of things that, that in, Involves, you know, like I said, it's like my magic formula of of eating really clean, being really clean, really being really into health and wellness because I do believe that's the way that you're able to do more and operate at a higher level. And then, you know, I, I, I want to keep layering into that what you know everything else, which is what my book is what my book is going to be about. I'm working on a book proposal right now, and it's about you know how do you do it all. And how do you stay in the game as a woman, as a mom mm. during those years when it's really, really tough? And you're probably seeing that with your first child is yep. that there are really tough years that people don't acknowledge are way tougher than other years. And how do you hold on for dear life and keep your foot in the door so that when the years aren't as tough and you have things under control, you have this business to go back to and you're not trying to re-enter the workplace then if you really wanted to try to you know, stay in it somehow. That's also awesome. when are you going to get that book out cuz I want to get that book. <laughs> well, I'm trying to I'm trying to get Pressure's a book deal. On. I have my proposal ready to go. I finished the summer. So, I'm trying to get if anybody out there wants to give me a book deal, you let me know. We're working on it right now. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. I think that is spot on. I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Obviously, I'm living it every single day. My wife is living it more real than I am, but um I can see it. I can see the gist intensity. And then I can't imagine people with multiple kids trying to balance that. It's just amazing uh, what what happens there in the fortitude that you have to have and the intensity that you have to have in it. Right. It's just crazy. It's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of logistics. And then it's a lot of, um, you know, you're only as happy as your unhappiest child and trying to keep a pulse on, you know, what each child needs and how their needs are different and making sure that, you know, you're not using the one size fits all approach with everything with them, but then also not being too individualized because they have to sneak or swim. I mean, listen, that's the whole, the whole podcast in itself. Yeah. <laughs> It's our parenting podcast. Yeah, we're starting. It's coming, a parenting podcast. Coming, coming this new year. <laughs> well, let's stick with the yeah. the whole, you got a, a little bit into daily routine and habits and everything. And we always like to ask the top producers, obviously you're super successful. You've built this business. You've built this team. What are some of the daily routines that you do? You know, you, you touched on a little bit from right. a health perspective and staying healthy, but what are some things that you do every single day that really contribute to your success? So every day I do you take time for some sort of mindfulness meditation? I mean, there's a difference between mindfulness and meditation and I do love getting to meditate. I don't always get the chance to truly meditate and sometimes it ends up having to be more mindful about just like recentering and focusing on what needs to be focused on. How long do you um, meditate so for? How long do you meditate for? I go through phases. I, when I really am really fully meditating, which is where I'm going back to right now, I went through a little phase between filming where I was just like, oh my God, I'm so happy to not be filming and, and everything that I just like, the wheels kind of fell off. I was still meditating each day, but it was not as intense. I do find that I meditate then for 15 minutes a day mm. where I truly try to meditate for 15 minutes a day. And then and then when I can find a, like a, a quiet place, I meditate a second time in the afternoon wow. um, awesome. to try to just reset. And I do find that the second meditation is almost more important than the first. Hmm. Um, I've been trying to hit 30 seconds. So, I've been trying, working, been, trying to, I've been trying to hit 30 seconds. I'm working my way up to a minute to be able to meditate. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's, it's very good. We just bought all of our employees the app Calm. I saw that. Yeah, yeah just to... for Because it's, I don't know if you're familiar with Calm, like the meditation yeah. app or whatever. We just... 
got that for all of her employees to try to help, you know, in that, or, you know, people can do what they want, but give people the opportunity to learn. It is insanely hard to, to meditate. It's insanely hard. But then, but then when you get into it, you, it becomes the opposite. We're like, I'm so deeply exhausted, even though I have a ton of energy and I do a lot every day, that if you get me into a meditation for 10 minutes in an afternoon, I have no problem. I could literally, I can close my eyes right now and meditate. No problem. I'm literally like, oh yeah, sure. Give me 10 minutes like to just reset because I know how powerful it is for me because I, I get to, you know, I'm up really early. And so by the time noon or two o'clock comes around, I'm like, I've had a whole day. Like I'm ready to start another day. No problem. I just need to reset. That's a great point. Like I've been getting up at 350. Um, it also weird fact is like, I used, I was getting up at four and I changed it to 350. There's something about sleep cycles. I know nothing about this stuff. So don't trust my word on it. But that 10 minutes is all the difference. Like I'm so much more alert at 350. So it must be something with my sleep cycle. But like you said, is like wow. by the time I hit 12 o'clock, it's like a new day. So I got to try this meditation thing. I've never tried it. That be honest, I've never really tried the meditation stuff. I'm a, I'm a faith based person, so I do like quiet time mm-hmm. um, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's like a Bible study type thing. But I've never done like the pure, just like meditation type stuff in the morning. But people swear by it. It's all connected. I mean, you can whatever you can do to connect. I think it, it does connect you with your higher power. Whatever your whatever your faith is, I do believe that there is a huge higher power element to this. And, you know, it's your subconscious, it's whatever it is. And and then you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it is, it is hugely powerful. And I think, especially when we're dealing with difficult times, I think for me, the first six months of starting my team was like almost traumatizing, almost traumatic because it was so hard and so unexpectedly difficult that I actually feel like I'm coming out of something that was like, wow, I was under so much stress that I wasn't even able to process how stressful Mm. it was and how I, if I had had a little, if I had like tinkered a little bit more and had a little bit better habits, I probably would have been able to process things differently or, you know, and, and I'm, so that's why I'm really pushing back into my more strict meditation schedule, which I had kind of slowly fallen off of, you know, in the last six months. Well, you've been crushing it. So I can understand why. All right. Last question for you though. Knowing what you know now, what would you go back and tell your younger self? Maybe that 16-year-old girl, you know, high school, college age. What advice? Um, so the advice I would give my younger self was would have definitely been to take the time and energy and investment in myself in any sort of any sort of coaching or account true accountability during my younger years. Mm. You know, I really didn't get back into truly, I didn't really get into truly getting coached until now, probably until the last couple of years, like really being coached. I, I have a hypnotherapist who I go to for like emergencies and she's been really, really helpful over the years. I never saw her on a regular basis and it was a different kind of therapy and she's super, super strong and very, very nurturing. And that was really, really amazing. And I think it helped me with a lot of things, but there is something to be said for really quality coaching. And I, my first in-person with Tony Robbins was in 2019 in November. Um, and that what was so special about that was I was in the process of casting, you know, and so oh, I awesome. was able to really transform, like use that as a, a moment to, to like truly harness my like higher power and my own power to be able to kind of, I think, manifest what happened, which was getting, getting, you know, successfully getting cast on the show. And, you know, I think that's something that, that is, is so underrated for our generation, because I think what happens is because of like the addiction to all of the devices, which is something mm-hmm. that there wasn't as bad because I'm, I'm, I'm 1983 was my birthday. So we didn't, I feel like it's not You're the young. level of addiction to devices. doesn't, not the level of addiction to devices that the younger kids have now. Um, but like really acknowledging that we are all trying to numb are like numb ourselves a lot because Mm. of the fact that things are so stressful. And then there's, and then there's this input coming in from all these different places. And it's like really harnessing your true will and power and, you know, reconnecting with your higher power, the meditation, all of that stuff, but also just like pushing you in a different way to not cling to any sort of trauma or any sort of stuff that's happened in your past so that because the truth is is like it doesn't really help you it's important to work through whatever you need to work through and i'm not downplaying any trauma and i don't have any significant trauma in my life so i can't even 
talk about that because I don't, I've been super blessed. Um, but like really making sure that you move on from anything that you're mm-hmm. man- that you're like stuck in your head about. And if I had spent more time doing that earlier, um, <laughs> my mom, that was my mom dialing in. Oh. She must be listening. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, I think, I think it would have made a really, really big difference. And I think I, I think I would be in a different place than I am right now, or at least maybe have, have done a couple things differently, you know, and I think it would have been, that would have been really, really helpful. And I, and I encourage anyone to kind of, to kind of do that stuff. Cause I think it's amazing. That's Great awesome. Advice. So well said. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Kirsten. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you, follow you on Instagram. I know you said you have some speaking engagements coming up. How can they find out about those? So the best place to find everything about what's going on with me is at kirstenjordan.com, which is my website. Um, it's spelled like my name is spelled, just a tough one. But the best the way to remember how my name is spelled is to follow me on Instagram at kirsten.jordan, which is easier to find because if you look up MDL and all that, you can like click through and eventually you'll find me uh, if you have trouble spelling my name. And that's that's where all of it is. And as far as speaking engagements, that's all going to be listed there on my site too. And, awesome. and I'm excited to do more of those because, you know, I think anybody who is watching this and, and you know, understands that, you know, I mean, I've only been doing this. I was just aired in May. So, I mean, I just literally have just gotten into this, you know, for me, getting a book deal is going to take a minute, but I think there's a lot of possibility there. And the best way to do that is to show that you have a true following and that you have people who would be interested in buying your book. So you can support me by signing up to my newsletter, like signing up with my newsletter or, or following me on Instagram or, or anything that shows that you support my brand. Awesome. Thank you so much again. And thank you all for listening. We're going to have all those links that Kirsten mentioned over in the show notes at staypaidpodcast.com. While there, you can also find the video for this episode and you can see the moment when Kirsten's mom called because her video cuts out. <laughs> if you enjoyed this, like, po- hey. if you enjoyed this episode and hey. want to show your support, you can leave a five-star rating over at Apple Podcasts along with a comment and your review. And the best way to show support for the show is to tell a friend and share this episode on your social media. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre. What a great episode. Really inspiring. Here's my ex- action item for you guys. And I think it's going to be a challenge for everybody on here. But I really, really want you to commit to doing this. If you remember, she said her secret power was really getting clean, as she would call it, right? Eating healthy, getting to the gym, like her mental health, the meditation. I want to challenge you to take action on that in your own business. And the reason why I wanted to pick this as the action item for you and your business and your life is because I've been doing the same thing. Actually, in the last month and a half, I've lost 19 pounds. And I've been doing physical training. I've been doing this. is not a thank you for clapping. It's not a bragging on myself. But the point being is I can testify to what that example of, man, I can think clearer. Everything in my day becomes a little bit more organized. I feel ahead of the day. I want to challenge you right now as you're listening to this. You know, hey, you want to start eating healthier. You want to get to the gym. You want to start meditating. The reason you're not is because you truly just haven't acted upon it. You haven't taken action. Remember, the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single industry is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 